Tonight on RGB, we talk about the business of show with Terry and Mumpo. We find out how to balance a life spent in the limelight and we learn Terry and Mumpo's Christmas secrets. So we're right in the middle of the sweet spot of the holiday season and whether you're celebrating Christmas, having a happy Hanukkah or just enjoying your Kwanzaa blessings, we here at Real Koposa would like to wish you all a safe and fun-filled holiday season. Now, I'm Amala Mindigut Donovan Goliath and uh, we are here, we're bringing you Real Koposa actually from the Hyde Park Corner Christmas Tree Lighting. And next to me is a present that I'm sure most men and a lot of women would love to unwrap on the 25th. Snazo Yolwa. Oh, Donna, you're always so sweet. And Nunyani Sile, but I'm also sure Uba, he's made it onto more Christmas wish lists than blesses and new cars. Abagurio Kaposa, again, we love to get you closer to celebrities than even their own stretch marks. Now, Sanje, a core exception as we bring you two female icons who are not only making big moves on the local scene, but also the continental and international entertainment scene. In the world, usually as women, we like to bring each other down. Plus sevens are in the same industries, but these two, on the seat of superstars tonight have built an empire and built themselves up with their perfectly manicured fists. Now here to share their secrets on success, handling being the best in the business and staying friends in this particular industry are two ladies who we are super honored to have on our seat of superstars. It is none other than the beautiful and wonderful Terry Petto and, and Mambo Bresh. Hey. How are you ladies doing? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for oh, having you. us. You guys, just always so, so elegant. You know what I like now? Like, while we were chatting, did you see the two of them just looking at each other, just like, yeah, we got this, we got this. <laughs> there's, a, there's definitely a chemistry here, like the true friendship, we can sense it. You guys are not putting this on for any cameras or anybody else. Tell us about that. I mean, first of all, we play pretend for a living, so I can't pretend in real life. <laughs> Is there a formula for this thing? Um, I think it's love. Uh, we're in love. Wow. Um, it's, yeah, that's just that. That's and simple. It's and that company. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But uh, with you guys being friends as well as business partners, how do you separate the two, especially when you're having arguments? Well... <laughs> do you? Um, I mean, uh, friendship is a relationship, so yeah. there will always be arguments. And, um, and I like working with people I like. So for me to do business with someone I love, someone I like, someone that I care about, someone who has the same vision and dream as me, it's quite easy. So even if we don't agree on certain things, we always, you know, sit down and be like, okay, um, well, my buddy, um, I think you're wrong, I'm right, and I'm not going to agree with you because <laughs> we're both going to be wrong. So. <laughs> mm. so can we move on? And you can just sometimes agree to disagree. Yeah. Or just call a lawyer. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> that escalated Mambo, quickly. you have a <laughs> wonderfully bold personality. Ne? Wonderfully bold. It comes through in everything that you do. Uh, what, is, what, are, what are people's first assumptions upon meeting you? Honestly, I can't read minds, so I don't know. People think I'm pretty aloof, I would say. Um, they think that um, I'm unapproachable. They feel like I'm unapproachable. Um, I don't know. Maybe I have this like standoffish kind of look about me. But I always said I cannot change my face. Once you get to encounter me, then you know, you'll know I'm just a bundle of joy and love. And I like that. Now, there seems to be a lot of competition between women in the entertainment industry. Yeah. Yeah? Um, how do you guys feel about that? How do you deal with that? Um, look, I don't know about other people. Um, I, I always say I'm pretty self-absorbed. <laughs> I'm very, I'm, I'm kind of like so involved in my world and in our world. Uh, my mom always used to say that you're your own competition. So I, I, I don't have the time or the desire to look at somebody. I really don't. I'm so focused on like what I'm doing. Am I better than I was yesterday? So yeah, it just, it doesn't really, I don't think it affects me at all or I wanted to. You guys also seem to be having a lot of fun from what we can tell on social media, jet setting to LA, living it up, but you also go to, to auditions when you're there, am I right? Yeah. What do you reckon is the one thing that's still missing or still lagging behind in the SA film and TV industry? I mean, I think our industry is honestly growing. I think um, 
more actors are working today than they did five years ago, ten years ago. There are more local films at any given time. If you go to the cinema, there's at least one local film. Yep. So we are, you know, we can't compare ourselves to Hollywood. You know, it's an engine that's been operating for many, many years. Uh, but the pace that we you know, we're growing, I think it's quite exciting. And I think writers are writing, actors are acting, and um, I mean, these are the times, like this is the perfect time to be an actor, but obviously there's still room for growth. So um, I think what we can do is just, we need to like get more excited about our stories, because I think Americans as well, they're excited about their Absolutely. stories. Let's let's do the same. Let's get excited about our stories. Let's make... Um, support the industry. Support the industry. Let's make our own superheroes. Okay. Just between us girls, I hope Harvey did not touch you on your studios. I, I did not have the Good. unfortunate privilege of meeting him, but you did. You've met Harvey. Really? Yeah, I did. Ooh, cheers. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm not laughing. <laughs> I'm, I'm really sorry. Yeah. I'm really sorry because some of the things that happen. Anyway, no, it's, like, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a different it, discussion. It gets dirty yeah. sometimes. Uh, it gets you know dirty what? For me, I'm like, um, I know who I am, and um, yeah. that's the most important thing. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I didn't have a bad encounter with him. I, I'm, I wouldn't lie, and I don't need that kind of fame by, you know, saying something happened when it didn't. Okay. Let's stay in Hollywood, actually. You've had an amazing year. Um, you've won a couple of awards, multiple awards, rather. Let's use the word multiple, not a couple. Um, what does it feel like being um, recognized internationally? Um, honestly, it's validating. Uh, I love what I do. Um, I'm not always working because I'm so picky with the projects that I want to do. So when I put effort and time into one project and then the feedback is, you know, uh, recognition, accolades, it really means a lot. Um, it, it, you know, it drives me to, to, to like, want more. Let's talk a little bit about a United Kingdom. You are playing a character called Naledi. Tell me a little bit about Naledi and how you, how you prepped for that role. My character is, you know, obviously in the beginning, you know, very suspicious, like, uh, this is not our queen. What, what are you doing? Yeah. Why, why her, of, of all people? Uh, like, so many chicks, like, maybe even my friends are here, yeah. and, you know, they'll be perfect for you. And um, it's also their journey, Ruth and, and the lady, uh, is about sisterhood, and how sometimes, you know, you think you know someone by the way they look, and given a time, or given a chance, like, we all, good people in the end and you see this uh, relationship grow you see her you know starting as like very you know like cold and like i don't want nothing to do with you to this is my sister and i'm gonna fight and protect uh it's it's one of those you know it's one of the most important films i think for the continent but also one of those love stories that uh you didn't know about and um and i loved being part of it sis mampo you did the jakes are missing i did i remember tell us about the movie and uh it's been said that uh playing the role of janice jakes was very easy for you because that character when uh, you just bring it out justin J. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no i i wouldn't say it was easy um because it's a it's a the jakes are missing was a comedy yeah and i've been doing drama um, and soap opera stuff for so long that um, it was kind of, it was nerve-wracking to sort of be like, okay, can I be funny? Do I have comedic timing? Um, and just sort of like being the lead and leading it in that direction and, yeah. um, and getting it right, you know? So I wouldn't say, I don't think any sort of character that one plays is ever easy. Mamela, you played Winnie opposite uh, Lawrence Fishburne, was it? Are you finding that Hollywood is now more open to letting Africans tell their own story, or is it still a long battle that we need to fight? I think the question is, do we need Hollywood's permission to tell our own stories? No, we don't need permission, but they tend to have deeper pockets than, than we do. Um, then what will happen is, then they will bring their own cast yeah. and tell the story in their, um, in, in, in their own way. And um, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's important for us to, to, to look at it this way. Madiba is a US and, you know, Canada production, so it's meant for that audience. And it was shot, in, it, it is a South African story, and it was shot in South Africa with three American actors and over 100 South African actors that are part of the cast. So if you look at it that way, then you're like, hmm, in actual fact, um, this should push us to now have our own actors, have our own um, whoever, Tapola Mukwena, all the leading men that we have to play 
uh, the role of Mandela. What is the, the one bit of advice um, that you guys wished you had received when you were starting out in this career? The rejection is part of what we do. The game, yeah. yeah. It's part of the game. Never sell your soul. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> Incredibly powerful stuff. Um, I think uh, we, we need a bit of a break. We need we to let, let's, 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 let's pay the bills. We need to pay the bills. Um, RGB will be back after the break. We still have our ladies here on the seat of superstars, Terry Peto and Mampo Brescia. See you guys shortly. Coming up, we find out what happens at a celeb family Christmas and we go behind the scenes of Mampo and Terry's family Christmas and then we find out where the lovely ladies are headed. Mampo the real Kaposa is back to give you the gift that keeps on giving in Dabazon Rimi. And tonight we continue giving as we chat with our two ladies, Terry Petto and Mampo Brescia, right here at the Hyde Park Corner Christmas Tree Lighting. Ladies, oh, Mampo actually, let me direct this one to you. How, how do you handle the pressure of being a businesswoman, an actress, a superstar, and a mom and wife? I am a dragon. Mm -hmm. A dragon. I like that. I live in the skies. No, I think it's important to have, um, to understand what it is that grounds you. Yeah. So that you know when to stay focused and you know when to be like, okay, I need a break right now. Yeah. It's balance for me, at least. Um, I have a great support system. So um, it kind of, yeah, that's, that's basically. Uh, do you feel? Yeah. Sometimes I feel like that. Yeah. <laughs> The energy, the Christmas energy yeah. the kids have behind us is unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> now, we mentioned earlier on that you guys um, are business partners. Why educational toys? Because we like being smart. And we want smart kids. And we want smart kids. <laughs> <laughs> she was saying, I mean, um, as a mom and myself, like I have so many kids in my life. Yes. And, um, and you want to give them, for me, I wanted to give the kids in my life, the tools I never had. Right. Uh, to make sure that um, I live some kind of legacy as well. Like, I want to be a mom one day, and I want to look back and say, this is where it all started. And also, looking at where our education is right now, it's not something to be proud of. And it's, it's unfortunate that you have to be wealthy or rich or uh, come from a better family to have better education. So in a way, we just wanted to democratize education and say, um, you know, we are not too important for this subject. Absolutely. Let's get down to the ground. Let's start from like uh, early childhood development. Uh, can your kid, you know, hold a pair of scissors? Well, so we focus on, you know, gross motor skill, fine motor skill, um, math, science, and also some of the things that we struggled with. Yeah. You know, like um, now we know the solution. Now there's technology. Now, now there's you so many things. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's and so there's many things that are more out there. empowering than when Bring you're learning. Together, you know, it's yeah. it's so exciting. We, you know, you were just saying, I love learning new things. I love discovering new things. It really, really is amazing. You know, and there's no better feeling. And I want we want to be able to impart it to South African children from all st uh, um, strokes of life. And, yeah. Terry, do you find that as the years go by, Tlao Kotuga for Christmas and holidays, they start giving you those, so, mkwenyana, kids, nyana, do you, do you start getting those questions more frequently? Um, you know, it's funny because I get a lot of that from my relatives. Yeah. Like, my mom never asked me that. My dad never she asked me. No, she doesn't. Like, because she knows I'm busy. And but whenever, it's always those aunties. That are not like, even going to babysit, but guy. they want you to have kids. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Absolutely. And for me, I'm like, um, my heart is big enough to love as many kids as I can. And, um, and also, it's a choice. You know what I mean? Like, um, I'm in my mid-30s. I can choose if I want to have kids. Or I can choose um, other options. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I, I, can, I can, I'm an amazing aunt, I think. And, um, and for the new and hugs and sticky and I've got mother as well. If I want those little kisses and hugs and sticky fingers, there's so many kids around me, so I don't feel the need to bring one right now. Yeah. I love that. But one so day, this is a good way to deal with the I love pressure. that. That was you a good way. You know what I do? When, the last time I went home, 
abo aunt, those aunties that are not even in your immediate circle, <laughs> they want, they, but she, umtuanagapumla. Iwariam is she's not going to meet a man because she travels so much. I'm like, but when, what are you going to do? If I bring you a husband yeah. here, nizomenza. Because the idea is that that's what should happen. Yep. So let's break those, 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 those constraints. It's, it's myopic, according to me, I think. We can be whatever we want to be and we can and achieve what we want to achieve. Like, yeah. Cheers, sir. <laughs> Leading ladies, the men. We can give each other hugs and kisses. Done. Tell us about um, your earliest Christmas memories. See, I'm old. My grandmother's. <laughs> you know, <laughs> well, for me, my grandmother's, um, you know, house growing up for Everton uh, with my cousins. Uh, and I remember because they used to wake us up at five or earlier to watch the sun play. And um, yeah, I remember this one year, I was like, this year, definitely gonna wake up. And it was beautiful. You know, we got, you know, open our gifts in the morning and uh, watch the sun play. It doesn't happen to <laughs> me. Oh, are you too old? Hmm? Oh, are you too old? I'm too old to remember. It, tell God. me, tell me, was it before Mary was even pregnant? <laughs> I, feel, I feel like it was, actually. Um, you know, I, I grew up in quite a large family in a household. Um, and I remember that my mom always used to cook the night before. Uh, and she used to make this amazing Cornish turkey, chicken thing, whatever it is. I can't cook, so I don't know. I, don't, I can't even describe the stuff. But I, I remember we were... Enough. Enough. <laughs> we were woken up by the smell in the morning, and my dad would always get, like... It's, it's crazy, we would get, like, educational films but historical educational films. So we'd wake up in the morning, Christmas morning, to go watch a movie. Okay. And we'd all have we breakfast in the... Yeah, well, we should have gone to church. I love that. <laughs> but we didn't. We'd wake up, all of us would rush into the, to the living room and watch this film. And then we'd sit around the table and we'd talk about, what did we learn from that movie? I don't know. It was just a thing. What was uh, the first Christmas gift you received as a child? Jeez, that's tough. Um, I remember. Clothes, guys. It's always clothes. No, you, you, you always, money. yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what can I? <laughs> money. <laughs> money. Like, no one gave me money. Well, I got, well, you get a Christmas dress. Yes. That you have to wear to church anyway. Yes. And I remember getting um, a doll and a toothbrush with a little cover thing. So happy. Yeah. Tried it to see. That was nice. For you, it was money. You got cash? I got cash. You still have it? I got cash. Can I have some? <laughs> no, it was a million years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know, Inga, to must bring us to another break, man. Give the advertisers a chance to know, scheme your year-end bonus at least. We'll see you guys after this. After the break, we learn what Mumpo and Terry are hoping for in the new year. With a pair of ladies so beautiful, their mirrors feel honored to reflect them. Ladies, oh. Mr. Wright. I like that. I like that. That was an intro. Yes, it was. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your current tr uh, Christmas traditions. Um, for me, it's really special because I get to make up my room. Yay! Uh, and I have a kid, so it's centered around her, making it special for her. Now that she can talk, she tells me what she wants. Um, we put up the tree a couple of, like a month later, like now we'll start, we'll put up the tree. And then um, we love to sing. So we'll gather around the tree and put the presents on Christmas Eve and, and we'll sing Christmas carols. And it's just really fun. And, you know, we'll drink, uh, I'll drink wine. Uh, she'll drink what kids drink. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <milk>. <laughs> And it's just like, you know, we're just bonding and it's beautiful and it's our tradition and it just, yeah, makes us happy. Well, I think I've adopted what we used to do growing up. Uh, I still do that. We bake the night before because uh, I have like, you know, two little ones, uh, my nephews. So I bake with them and then we make cookies for Santa. Wow. Yes. And I come and get her cookies yeah. and pretend that I also bake them. Oh, is that, and that, that, that's so actually my next them? question, actually. As friends, do you guys ever spend um, oh, we do. Christmas yeah. together? We, we, we've done that. Even for the you know, tree lighting, we yeah. always like, you know, go to a house and then we'll drive to the vault to my parents' house and do that. And yeah. I mean, she's my daughter's godmom. Um, she's, you know, she gets asked for So it's inevitable. 
for shopping and stuff like that. And like, but Mumpo, you mentioned that you now set your own rules. Is there anything that you know you've taken as a Christmas tradition over the years from your own family growing up? Um, I suppose I give her money. No, I'm kidding. Um, I give her money. <laughs> it's never too early. I was asking you for money, which is like, okay, I'm not involved. Um, I mean, we do. Obviously, we have to sort of like uh, synergize and bring our cultures together. So, um, from my husband's side of the family, we'll spend some time with them on Christmas Eve and we'll do, you know, what Italians do. Um, and then from my side of the, uh, uh, I think, I just, I don't know. Um, I steal her cakes and pretend <laughs> I bake them, you know, and then it smells like my mom's house and um, yeah, then that's what she thinks. Like, hey, this is what we do, but really, there. And You're just being surrounded by love, I would say. I, I mean, that's that's for me of the, the primary uh, goal. It's just to make sure that the house is warm and well, not warm because it's friggin' hot in December, but like warm in love and love and and people. And, yeah. Now, have any of you guys ever been away from your family during Christmas? And was it by choice or was it work? Sometimes you travel, yeah. so I've, I've traveled with my nephew because he wanted white Christmas, he wanted to see snow, so we went to the US oh, wow. one Christmas, so yeah. we left, you know, the rest of the family, um, you know, uh, 2010, she was, was in, Los in Los Angeles, and, uh, and, but we had still, you know, Christmas lunch, and she woke up for Skype, so we still find a way to, oh, man, to still, that. you know, bring it to together it, and yeah, make it special. The way we want it to be special. So bearing in mind the fact that you sometimes travel and you're away from the family, what then would you say is the one, one place where you can pinpoint what Christmas is to you? I think you want to have like amazing food, you want to be surrounded by love, you want to unwrap um, a present or two, um, and you want to celebrate uh, Jesus Christ as the a Christian for me. Like, you know, it, yeah. So you, you really want to take it all in and regardless where, where, where you are, like for me if, if I'm in the US or if I decided that I want to spend in a different continent and experience a different culture, I'll still be surrounded by the people that I love. And, uh, and make it special as well. Now, I think a lot of people want to know, um, what is the most cherished gift that you guys have given to each other for Christmas? Like a literal gift? Uh, yeah, a real gift. Please don't say friendship and make us say, No, oh. uh, we want to know. And how much was it? No, 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 don't tell us how much it was. <laughs> it's, it's tricky because December is also my birthday. Oh, one of those. So, yeah. One of so, those. Yeah, so I always make it about me. Yeah. And around my birthday is Mother's Day, so it's always like, what am I getting? <laughs> I'm like, here's a kid. I think also, like, honestly, spending time together and bring our families together, that's, for me, that's special. Thank you so much for coming to join us for our Christmas special. The fact that Terry and Mumpo could come and put a little extra happy into our happy Christmas. Yay. Yay. So out there, please stay safe, ladies and gentlemen. Please do not drink and drive. Do not smoke anything that is going to get you in handcuffs. We want to see you guys here next year. So from all of us here at RGB, can we do a collective Merry Christmas? No, no, a collective happy. No? happy. Can we do a collective? <laughs> yes. Can we do a collective happy for all of you? out there. Thank you so much for joining us. Merry Christmas and here. Happy! <laughs> Good night. Take care.